Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Batam Lise Diana. With my colleague, I'm with my colleague Mkunda Peace. Um, we come from Rwanda, and we, the Rwandans, originated from the Horn of Africa. Uh, that's we are part of the Eritreans and all the Ethiopians and all those people that come from there. Uh, in our culture, we have a different way of greeting. Some of you for do the shaking of their hands, kneeling down. Why for us when you're greeting uh, a lady, this is what you do. When you're greeting the boys, this is what you do. Yeah, and she's going to talk about more of that. I'm going to talk about what makes I'm going to talk about what makes our culture unique. Mm, the culture way, eh? The ladies, ladies put on mishanana and men men put on their mishanana but they put on a white a white t-shirt which, which they tuck in in their in their in their long like long, long it's like a skirt this one eh? but for them they just tuck in and they put on their mishanana up with a white t-shirt this is the mishanana and for boys they put on a white t-shirt up that's the difference in addition to that, this is called a muiteru. They call it a muiteru. The whole attire is a mushanana, but then for when you want to specify, this is called a muiteru, and this is? This is called muchenero. A muchenero. And for the boys, you only wear the white t-shirt, the muchenero, which I don't have right now, and the what? The so-called muiteru. Mm, that's all about the culture wear. Yeah? Um, another thing that makes our culture unique is beautiful women and handsome men. Yeah. Um, Rwanda is well known for having the most beautiful ladies and handsome men. Another thing is their national and local language. Like they respect their national language, which is Kinyaranda, which is their local language. Yeah, which is our local language, Kinyaranda. And another thing is about our music, dance, and, lit and the literature, our cultural dance. Mm. Another thing that makes it unique is the art of basketry. That is craft. That they make we make a lot of crafts. For example, basketry, mm, these necklaces from those beads. Oh, you're seeing them. Mm. What else? I think that's all that makes our what our culture unique. It's going to talk about the staple food. Uh, our staple food. We have the bananas, cassava, sweet potatoes, beans, and milk. The way you people pre prepare your matoke is different from the way we prepare our matoke. We do roast. We, first, we roast our matoke. We do the roasted matoke. Then, if you're going to have matoke and meat, you have to roast the matoke traditionally. We roast the matoke and we also roast the what? The meat. And then the cassava. Actually, most of our food, we roast it. We don't prepare it like you guys prepare. You put in banana leaves, what, 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 no. For us, most of our food, we have to roast it. And then the milk, in most cases, in the milk, we take it raw. We don't boil, we don't do it, but then we take it raw. And we consider that being healthy. Taking the milk, when it's, we've just milked it from the cow, it's considered to be a healthy what? 
a healthy move. Now we talked about the special clothing. Mm, next is the cultural practices and norms in Rwanda. Mm, it is considered extremely rude eating in public. Yeah, this like it's very rude like to find a Rwandan okay. Any random like either for a man or a girl eating in public, for example, maybe like in public transport, um, eating from anything like eating from public, it's considered rude, and men don't eat food cooked by the housekeepers. They only eat food cooked by their wives. Mm -hmm. And we have this belief that eating beans makes someone darker. Mm -hmm. So in Rwanda, if, you, if we see someone who is dark, we, we believe this person eats a lot of beans. And women <laughs> don't eat goat's meat. And this is because of two, majorly two reasons. This is because they believe that it's going to make them develop hair on their chin and they will start becoming stubborn. And we believe that a good woman is a silent one. That's what, they believe, that's what we believe. Mm. I think is that the Rwandans don't eat fish, grasshoppers, and pork. I think, hmm? I think that's it. In addition to the Rwandans not eating gra grasshoppers, fish, grasshoppers are considered to be very dirty insects, very dirty insects, because you, you cannot separate the intestines from the other body parts, and we really don't eat that. Then the fish, it's because of the genocide. When you're eating fish, you're eating your fellow people, because during that genocide, people were killed and thrown into the lake so that the fish used to feed in the dead bodies. And by the time you're eating, a, you're eating the fish, you're, meaning you're eating someone's what? Body. And then the pork, pigs are considered to be very dirty. Yeah, and of course no one would want to eat something very dirty. Yeah? And then we also have the, we believe in peace and harmony. If you're to realize when, you, when you're in a community and there are so many Rwandis, they tend to love each other so much. They are really so close, they become friends. Even when they come from different homes, they come from, you know, they will tend to gather up and love each other more and more, more than any other tribes you guys have seen. About the business, business done in Rwanda, uh, we have basketry. Mm, there is gorilla trekking. Uh, these mob tourists come from different countries to come and tour in Rwanda because of the of gorillas there, and this has what this has created a lot of business. Mm, mm, we also have crafts in Rwanda. For example, necklaces, and this has been done to, to promote business through selling crafts and those baskets whereby Rwandans have continued to make a lot of money through, through their crafts. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's the gorilla trekking, like different people come to Rwanda to visit and look at the gorillas and they pay a lot of money and that's the different types of crafts we have in Rwanda. Baskets, those, those, those long baskets, eh? those ones, the long ones, we, we call them iviseche and those, those baskets, we, when when it's time for giveaway, the giveaway cele what ceremony, 
ladies carry the, the ladies carry those baskets to to their husbands' homes. Mm. And I think, okay, I think that's all about the business. I can now talk something about greeting eh? for old people. Mm, for old people, like if a young person like me is greeting someone old, older than you, you have to, mm, you have to greet, like you say, you tell the person, uraho, if it's one person, you say uraho, and the person replies, and if there are more people, you can say muraho, and the person replies, the people reply turaho. And if it's for a young person like you, of the same age, you can either say bite, and the person replies nibjiza, meaning, okay, bite means like, how are you? Or oh, what's up, hi, and you reply nibjiza, meaning I'm fine. Another thing the, about a greeting, in the Banyaranda, we the kids do not greet first. You don't greet first, you're supposed to wait for the elder person to greet you. You don't, like, you, like the Baganda, I saw them doing, what, what, what. You no, know, for us, we, you have to wait for the adult to greet you. Then you reply. And there are so many forms of greeting, you can say, when. There are more people, she told you, you can say muraho, then they'll be like muraho neza. Then biche, you cannot make a mistake of saying biche to one old person. It's like you're underestimating someone older than you. Because biche is like what's up, biche is like hi, and you cannot tell such things to an, ad an adult. And the other thing, uh, we have so many clans. I myself am a muega. Uh, Peace is a muega, but then we also have the Basinga and other clans. As they're working on showing you the, after me explaining, they're going to show you the traditional dance. And then the other way, uh, how we ended up in Uganda, it was because of the genocide, when our parents were being killed and our ancestors were being killed, so our parents decided, our late grandparents decided to shift from Rwanda to Uganda, where you guys welcomed us. You showed us love, showed us peace. Yeah, this is how we end up here in Uganda.
think that's all about our culture. <laughs>